that we've moved from this age of resources where we had people, we had budgets, we had more time than we do today to this age of ideas. And ironically, this is good news. I'm Steve Denning. I'm a strategy and marketing consultant here in beautiful Santa Cruz, California. I work with clients all over the country in really defining who they are and how they go about uh, competing in the marketplace. Killing Giants is, is, is a deep dive into how brands use leverage uh, to do what is seemingly an impossible thing, how they can take on a brand that on paper should be able to roll over and crush them. This is a seemingly impossible task, but I went out and I interviewed over 70 of really some of the world's most effective business people from Silicon Valley to the townships of South Africa to Brazil to New Zealand, China, Japan. And I distilled these lessons down into 10 ideas, 10 strategies that we as business people can apply really right away. I think one of the, the main critical ideas within Killing Giants is that we've moved from this age of resources where we had people, we had budgets, we had more time than we do today to this age of ideas. And ironically, this is good news. This tells us that it's really up to us. This is not something where we are now worth whatever the economic resources have been placed into our hands by someone else. It's really about the quality of our ideas, about the passion we bring to business, to work, and importantly, the discipline that we bring to ensuring that whatever it is that we're putting into play right. is rigorously executed out in the field so that it gets done, so that you finish well. Um, after talking to 70, more than 70 global business leaders, does one story stand out? I think a lot of stories stand out to me personally. If, if you want me to pick one, I'd pick Herman Mashaba, founder of a, a South African cosmetics company called Black Like Me. Here's a guy who raised himself largely alone on the streets of the townships of South Africa as a professional gambler from, from a very young age. He's supporting himself, he's supporting his family. And he goes on to have a series of commission sales jobs. He knows this isn't where he's gonna be in life. And he founds this company with a, a, a white colleague. And they're selling cosmetics salon to salon in the townships. So not only is he competing against the giants that we can guess, the L'Oreal's, the Shiseido's, and people like that, he's fighting the apartheid system of government. He's fighting a giant that is insidious and has really established rules to stop people like him from being successful. So he continues on in his career he overcomes a number of obstacles that would have stopped most of us, and he outlives the apartheid system. And so not only does he win against the business giants that he faces, he wins against the ultimate giant, which is his own government. And today, if you look at Black Like Me within, within the cosmetics uh, uh, industry in, in, in South Africa, they're, they're one of the largest cosmetics firms actually in all of sub-Saharan Africa today. He gives us a really vivid picture of what it means to, to really have no resources at all and to win on the strength of his own passion and his own ingenuity and his own stick to itiveness. Right. Social media plays a very unique role for a number of reasons. And yes, it's an extremely important uh, tool set for the giant killers, not only because we have tools that we didn't have five years ago at our disposal. We have so many different ways to tell our story. Uh, when we think of, of five years ago, it was largely a, a push style of marketing. Uh, we had traditional media and all of a sudden with this advent of more interactive, more conversational uh, tools at our disposal, not only do we have the means to level the playing field, not only do we have the means to tell our story in an interesting way, but our consumers, in fact, have a way of not only providing us feedback, but also engaging in those discussions with us. And this is important for a number of reasons. You know, brands that are interesting, this idea of interestingness, of not being a one-dimensional brand, really comes to the fore when we get into a social media discussion. 
Because now we have the means to tell interesting, complex, nuanced stories that wouldn't lend themselves necessarily to traditional advertising approaches. Consumers demand this of us, and we have the tools to do it. Now, it really comes down to our discipline and our creativity, and in fact, our personality to make sure that that story gets delivered and that we're hearing what people are saying in response.